and welcome to the Alchemist Inkwell. This is your spiritual and spirited podcast for grounded people, because what was that? Um, I don't know. So this don't. is probably not paranormal, you guys. Probably not like anything out of the norm. I think Zoom just had an update. You might notice you can see more of our bookshelves than you could before. And like, I can gesture bigger than I could before. I love this. Right? Um, we were just, we hopped onto this link. We were on a different link for the last two hours talking to one another and the Zoom looked the same. And then we switched to this link because we do that to organize the podcast. And all of a sudden I was like, whoa, my, I'm way zoomed out. You can see my whole bookshelves. What's that about? And Krista was like, you don't want that. Like you look more vibrant. All of a sudden it went boom. And like, Krista too. And it's still me. <laughs> it was so <laughs> And now we're like looking and like showing off our bookshelves to each other because like we can point out things now. We're like, we should just record this. Okay, right. <laughs> can hear other bookshelf tours here. Yeah. So here's a little mini bookshelf tour. So for me, if you are watching the video, there's this row of books and it's all paper side out, but the papers, the end paper or the um the edges. what is this called? The edges. What are they called? The edges. edges. Okay, thank you. The edges, the edges designed are all like really pretty and they're all like decorated. They're all books that I've gotten in like a special book box, like a Lumicrate and stuff that I probably won't ever read, but the end papers are really, or the edges are really pretty. So I stuck them there. Um, and that's Krista's little uh, talisman for me, that little circle that prevents my house from catching on fire, which is super fun. <laughs> this shelf up here above me is all of the books from different countries I've gotten. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. Um really nifty the messiest shelf is in my bottom corner here and that's all of my books there's more books on that shelf than any other shelf on the entire bookshelf and it's all of my books on ancient rome that i use for research and it's messy because i use them all the time and then dan brown and then i have a brandon sanderson shelf and the crystal book is up in the corner yes i have my crystal book which by the way um oh, what's her handle she does the, she, her work is just so incredible she crystallizes so many different books and it's amazing and i i love my hunger games crystallized book so much it makes my heart so happy so i'll let's i'll find our handle right now while we do this because i just think it's it's valuable yeah so my shelf is a bit closer to me so it's not as as beautifully framed as yours like chef's kiffs there um but mm -hmm. here we have up i have a water bottle it's got a uh, it looks like saturn but it's actually a chocolate chip cookie with rings um that's the logo for john edwards uh website that i'm the official astrologer and folk magician of that's so cool. plus app is a, a chocolate chip cookie with a saturn ring around it which i as a taurus and an astrologer love appreciate um, so they sent me this this thank you package when I joined and it's just all these really cute little gifts and I just put them up there as sort of a like I can't believe I've made it to this point in my life a little this is kind of like an altar too which we will be talking about later it's a gratitude <laughs> um oh, how to write books books so nice like, how to write books books um yeah like different lists of of words and occupations and feelings and anything like that for when I get stuck this is how I fill in my tea case and nice. this is my books I really liked in red bookshelf. So everything that's shelf worthy ends up here. Mm -hmm. Below that, that you can see is my to be read somehow already have the book bookshelf. So nice. at some point, and then below it is books to be donated. <laughs> um, yep. behind me, this is my, I wrote that bookshelf. Love it. Ancient astrology. This is ancient astrology, more theory. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that is um, more ancient astrology, but more modern. Um, so it's not ancient astrology, it's modern astrology. And then over here is Trova Trip up there with more yeah. uh, religion slash philosophy. And below Are you that, guys who oh, sorry, keep going. Yeah, below that is folk magic. On the other side is more like Bible based um and and like Enochian stuff. <laughs> and then below that are my tarot decks. And your Christmas bag. <laughs> and my Christmas present, which I don't know what it is, but it's over there. My Saradex are actually on a, a whole, I have, they have a whole, their own shelf. They're not on the bookshelf because they, there's too many of them, but I also have my tea leaves and my runes over there and um, all of my other divination stuff in that sort of space. That acts as an altar, which again, we're going to be talking about later today, but it's also where I keep all my Legend of Zelda action figures. Get it. I mean, Love that for you. <laughs> uh, my altar is also over there in the corner, which I might just like quickly flash for the podcast the reason i said i will quickly flash it is because i also have a floor to ceiling print of 
Hmm. this incredible incredible photograph that I love it's actually a two panel print it's amazing but it is naked (laughs) the internet doesn't like that um but it's incredible and it makes me happy but it's right by my altar uh but I was gonna mention so for Trova Trip we both have these signs that say Trova Trip on them um and it says both of our names on it and that was what the people were holding to like welcome us to get in the cab and it was the weirdest out of like and they let Malcolm let us keep them and, and we were both just like what? <laughs> trips so we like totally nerded it out and they're both they're both we can't see mine mine's on that side but it's underneath my like world map of all the places we travel um so <laughs> that one's over there the other bookshelf I have um is I have my bookshelf up here with books that I have pretty much I'm obsessed with or my, the next one I'm going to read so um my Circe's up there all my Madeline Miller is up there House in the Cerulean Sea my Fable series that's where Emily Wilde was before I gave my copy away for a third time um because that's as you should but I respect that because I'm going to hold on to my copy forever I can't wait for that next book I know I just keep giving it away and you know I, I really probably shouldn't but every time someone comes over I'm like have you read Emily Wilde and they're like no I'm like well here I have read this book so it's fine it, it literally is the third time i've given it but my next read is going to be starling house by alexi e. harrow who's the same person who wrote the Ten Thousand doors of january so i have that book up there yeah. um, and then you can't really see it but on my tops of my shelves i have um my graphic novels on that side which i have a lot of them um and then i have uh, more pretty pretty books books that i got in crates that i may or may not actually read but they're up there and they look really pretty I do just also want to preface this. Um, this is my like book bookshelf. Our room has one whole wall dedicated to our manga collection, mm-hmm. which is so much more extensive than my book collection. Because I really stick to my book buying rule for the most part, where I don't buy a physical copy of the book unless I loved it. Yeah. Um, over here, I have all of the books I've had since I was a teenager on. So this is where my sets of the books that shall not be named exist. This is where my like Shel Silverstein books are, my Hunger Games books, all my Percy Jackson books are over there, my Little House on the Prairie books are over there. All of that was actually my first book subscription box. I got a subscription box to Little House on the Prairie. Every month they would send us a Little House on the Prairie with a craft, a craft that related to the book. So we had like we made paper dolls or we like learned how to knit or like whatever it was when I was a kid. Also, the crystal person, the person who crystallizes books, half.moon.magic on Instagram. She's on TikTok too. Um, we're mutuals. She's awesome. Uh, the books that she does, the de- design she does, like I have a simple one. If you guys, if, if you're watching this on YouTube or on the Patreon, like you can see my book design and it, it's a simple design. I call it a simple design. You're going to be like, it has flowers that are crystallized in that book. And that is a simple design for her. She does incredible, incredible work and does very like, on season releases of different things so she'll do like you know valentine's day and have a bunch of romances or like halloween and have a bunch of like frankenstein and like other spooky books and so it's super cool anyway i just kind of shout her out because i love the crap out of my crystal i think everyone needs them yeah that's awesome Uh, anyway now that we did a bookshelf tour that we were not planning on doing it's just because zoom made us zoomed out which i'm so excited i hope it stays I feel very comfortable. Like I don't have to lean in as much as I usually do. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. I totally hope it stays. It'll be fun. A um, couple quick announcements before we get into this really exciting topic. Um, exciting for us. <laughs> exciting because it's something new and a change. Yeah. Exciting because the two of us have been watching this energy for like four months or more. <laughs> We're like, it's here. Yeah um so <laughs> it's 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 exciting for us to finally get to talk about it and introduce it to you but anyway beside the point before we get into that couple quick things we do still have some general admission tickets available for sacred spaces gathering we have sold out of vip um but we also have general so we have general admission if you want to still come and attend we do still have some space for you we would love to have you there honestly it gets cooler by the day mm-hmm uh really excited about i am so excited about this con- like i haven't been this stoked for something in a really long time like genuinely i just get to like we get to hang out with all of you like i'm so beyond stoked about that that is the coolest thing to get to do and it's just neat like really really neat 
And everything fell into place so perfectly for it, so easily for it. And even the people that we've collaborated with at the location and all around mm -hmm. have been so excited that we're doing it and supportive of, you know, yeah. having this kind of space and this kind of topic that it's mm -hmm. just been like, wow, this is something that definitely was supposed to happen. And it's happening. Yeah. Exactly. And a bunch of people we've had on the podcast are going to be there in different capacities like Camden. So he, the, if you guys remember our rune episode, um, he is going to be there. He's going to host a panel. He's going to be a reader. Um, and he's just going to give his awesome high vibe to all of us and hang out. It's going to be fantastic. Rebecca, who we had on last week is going to be there, um, doing the reading as well as hosting a workshop on top and bottom energy. <laughs> she can't get over it. It's so funny. <laughs> Um, and of course, Rebecca is hosting it with us. Other Rebecca, Rebecca, the ghost guide, Rebecca, mm -hmm. um, is hosting us with it. So like, there's, it's just already this like really cool community element, um, just from podcast <laughs> stuff alone. Um, but I am so excited to just get to be there and like be there with everybody's guides and get to have this collaborative energy. And if you haven't, haven't had a chance to be in a safe spiritual space as a group, like the people who've gone on our trips with us, with Trova, they know what it's like because it's weak. The, the spiritual energy is just so magnified and expansive and everyone transforms. And it's like just this beautiful, like, I really think that's like the ambrosia nectar of the gods energy. Like I truly do. And that is, this is going to be that on such a larger level. Um, not like it's massive. It's not like there's going to be a thousand people there. We're talking like 150, but like, it's so cool. And everyone's going to get to know each other and have this space. And ah, I'm just so stoked about it. And to your point, it's going to be like this very activating, transformative, amazing experience, but it's going to be the coziest way it could possibly be because so you're going cozy. to have all of the education, all of the, the people giving you attention and answering your questions and, and other people that you can connect with who get you. And mm -hmm. so it's going to be like this super refreshing connection to the, oh my gosh, I belong somewhere and I found it and I can keep it feeling. Mm -hmm. And I also mm -hmm. know what I'm lit up to do. Some of my, you know, I, I have a feeling, especially if you're a VIP and you're attending the speed reads, but that's not to say you can't get in contact with any of our readers because we will have a directory there for you to be able to contact them as well mm -hmm. to get clarity on where you feel drawn. What kind of genre of spirituality do you feel drawn toward? We have so many different areas that are being covered mm -hmm. and a QA and a panel. So be there, ask your questions because we're there and it'll be small enough that we are looking with you, at you, communicating, connecting so easily as mm -hmm. compared to, you know, a big room where we can't really make an individual connection, we can, we kept it this small on purpose. And mm -hmm. I'm, uh, it's, this is what I wish I would have had when I were younger. Yeah. I'm so glad I get to be part of building it now. I know. So I shout feel... out to Rebecca because it was, it was her inspiration as it came through and mm -hmm. we decided to be a part of it. And I will always be grateful for that invitation. A hundred percent completely agree. Like, thank you, Rebecca. It was so funny too, because I agree. We're, I'm so excited to just mingle with everybody and hang out mm -hmm. with everybody. And even as, you know, even if you're somebody like, I don't really like crowds, it's not going to feel that way. It will not like, it, it's going to feel like there's a bunch of friends in the room and you just get to hang out. Like it feels so cool. Um, the energy, like looking at it already and just knowing who's going to be there and who's volunteering and all these different things. I'm just like, it's just going to be such a collaborative, lovely group of beings all getting to hang out together. It was funny that when we were talking to Rebecca the other week, she's like, I'm just going to have a coffee in my hand the whole time because I don't think I'm going to get any sleep. And <laughs> yeah, well, either. So I totally understand because we're so amped. Like, we're so excited to just get to, to just get to spend time and do this. And it's just such a lucky thing. Anyway, if you can't attend in person, we do have a digital option. And I want to highlight that because it not what the digital option is, is you can watch in live time or you'll get the recordings after the fact of the keynote talks and the panel. Um, and so you'll get basically, how many keynotes do we have? Six, seven, six. Thanks, we have yeah. a lot. Right. We have four spaces gathering on. Now. We'll tell you how many we actually yeah. have. Sacred spaces gathering.com. We'll tell you how many keynotes we have. We have four on one day, three on the other, including the panel, I think. So seven ish. So you'll get all of those talks yeah. um, either sent to you, or you can watch them in live time via zoom. It will literally be like, happening in live time there um the other thing though which is really really cool with these um what with these talks we're also going to have 
hopefully we're working on getting this going, but having the Phasma box going at the same time. That you won't be able to watch in real time. Um, but what the Phasma Box is, is it is a paranormal investigation tool where spirits, not just ghosts, but guides, higher deities, that type of thing, can use this device to basically communicate where you can actually hear them talk. And honestly, if you go, if you go to Catherine Bergman's, um, officially Catherine, her YouTube, you can go and see the like some of these, how this works, especially her New Orleans video. I reposted it on YouTube if you want to check that out. It's so cool. You can literally hear the accents of the ghosts that are talking. You can, and you can tell the different voices. You can tell when it's feminine versus masculine. Like you can, it's very, very clear to hear. And we're going to have that running during all of the talks at Simon's Faces. And we'll send those out as recordings as well. So you can hear what the spirits have to say about the talks also. So that's the fun thing also. And if you are attending the conference in person, you will also get sent like the digital bundle after the fact. Mm -hmm. Um, so don't stress if you're like, but I bought, I'm coming in person. I want to hear this. Yes. You'll get to hear it as well. Um, but yeah, that's another cool thing. I don't know of any other conference that does that. No. So it's going to be a really cool adventure. Well, and that's what I really love, you know, other conferences and I have been to other conferences that are magic focused. They mm -hmm. are showing magic, but again, we're writers, right? We we're, they're telling magic. We're showing yeah. And we're mm -hmm. sharing magic. We're making it accessible. We're putting it in like a little lovely package and gifting it to the people who are there. You are not going to walk away from there being like, I don't know what I'm doing because every keynote and every workshop and every speed read or, you know, every vendor even is going to mm -hmm. be connecting with you. Um, gosh, I feel like I'm gushing at this point, but man. It's just going to be so cool. Anyway, please come. We would love to see you there. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all that's to say, we appreciate you. Please come hang out with us. Um, it's, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Sacredspacesgathering.com is where you can grab a ticket. We do still have some available, um, but we're in the home stretch. It's literally like when you listen to this, basically a, a week away. Yeah. It'll be a week <laughs> from the VIP mm -hmm. of yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. It's the uh, 26th is... to the 28th. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're not on the, the VIP ticket, which is totally fine, 27 mm -hmm. through the and it's still going to be super valuable. So oh yeah, do not fear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just made it, we gave it a tiered approach, but that doesn't mean that the basic is going to be any less valuable. It will still be very, very expansive <laughs> and helpful. So that is the, that's the main announcement that we want to make sure that we make and talk about. Um, also, a couple people, um, are really looking ahead at this year and they are wanting to do some more spiritual exploration and stuff. We do still have a couple spaces open on our trip to Italy yep. um, where we are going to go channel really cool ancient history stuff yep. um, in Italy with all of you. It's actually a smaller group this time. So it's going to be really intimate, really fun. If you want to come with us to Italy, we do still have a couple spaces available. There are payment plans available you can check that out. Um, go to either of the links in our bio. We'll be able to find our trip to Italy there. It would be really cool if you're feeling drawn to like having more spiritual exploration in your life in general. This is truly one of the best ways to do so. So just want to highlight that. And then Japan as well in yeah. the fall. I will also say if you're coming to Italy, I'm extra excited because we're going to be there for my birthday. <laughs> so I will be super stoked to be able to share my birthday with all of you who are in Italy with us. It's going to be amazing. And Japan is going to be so fun. Italy is going to be amazing for channeling and connecting and encountering spirit yeah. and history and all those things. And Japan is going to be really interesting for encountering almost elemental cosmic and self. Mm-hmm. Um, but either way you can't lose. Yeah. I will say if you're interested in our conversation we had with Rebecca last week about soul types, Japan is the trip you should come on. Yeah. That's great. Point. It's going to be that type of energy of figuring out your soul. What do your soul resonates with the different energy that vibes with you, what you can connect with these different shrines and sacred places that we're going to and these ancient locations that we're going to like we're going to one one of the oldest neighborhoods in all of japan while we're there like that is it's going to be a soul type soul journey style trip where italy is a lot more of like history and ghosts and channeling in that kind of way both are going to be so incredible and so activating and you will come back transformed but that is the focus that's a little bit different and i will note also Her. if you go to the the japan page and you're like oh it's not confirmed we actually 
in order to make it more affordable for everybody. We made it mm -hmm. so that that trip will not be confirmed until 10 people sign up. So mm -hmm. once we reach that threshold for Japan, it will be confirmed. So don't worry about it. It's only a matter of time uh, and you can be a part of that process. Mm -hmm. um, but that was so that we could make it more affordable for everybody. Yeah. And that was very intentional on our part. So it brought the cost down by like a lot. So it brought it down by a lot. <laughs> so that is, that's kind of what we're, and we're very close to that threshold anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you want to come and really understand your soul and your soul journey more, that's what Japan is for. And that's what we're dedicating that time to truly. Yeah. So we would love to have you in that space. And we'd love to have you in the Italy space. If that also speaks to you, if you're like, oh my gosh, I do need to understand. Like, I really want to focus on ghosts and understanding beings around us and calling in people that did live. I we're actually doing a tour. This this one's in just in Italy. Just a quick note before we dive into our topic. I know we're talking a lot, but it's a day. Okay. Um, <laughs> um but we are doing Ostia or the port of Ostia, Ostia Antica, when we are in um Italy. And it that is it is one of the coolest locations I've ever been in my entire life. It's like Pompeii, but without the volcano, but not many people go there. It is not like a tourist hotspot. There's not a lot of people around. Um, we basically got transportation there. And then even our guide isn't going to come with us. They're just going to like drop us in this ancient town and be like, see you in three hours and come back. And I went there before, so I'll give some tour and understanding, but it is like this free open channeling space that between our tour, which I'll like talk about the different, what this was and what that was, whatever. It's like, let's go find deities. Let's go find spirits that are still here. Go to a place and ask what it was and see what guys show up, bring cookies and leave them in the offerings of these different temples. Cause you literally just wander through temples that are in ruin and wander through bathhouses. Like you can just walk on these mosaics. Like it's, it's the wildest, coolest experience ever. So it's going to be really, really neat. Uh, but that's the level of thing that we're doing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be a, um, a tour kind of vibe. It's going to be a, I was there and I felt it and I was in it kind of vibe with some really amazing people. Um, and the coolest thing is like a lot of people who were on previous trips are coming back because it's a way for them to reunite with each other and hang out mm -hmm. with their, their people again. And I, I'm most excited about that. Just people being able to find people where they fit. Um, that was a big, point for me as a kid so creating all these opportunities now is huge and we're gonna go through we're gonna go through the vatican museums and talk to the objects yeah and their stories the more <laughs> tour guide for that is gonna be like this came from blah blah blah, blah. and we're like actually yeah, it did. yeah. <laughs> um also when we're in florence i'm gonna find agrippa's house and i'm probably gonna go just leave some kind of commemoration there agrippa yeah. is an incredibly poetic and lovely um, Renaissance astrological magician. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Anyway, that's what we're doing. You should come. It's a cool year. It's going to be neat. Speaking of cool year, that cool year kicks off on Saturday. So yeah. down here to are it. huh? The down to it. <laughs> Let's down to it. Yeah. So this we wanted to talk um, a little bit about the energy of Pluto and the Sun and Aquarius happening together well, all in the happy little family they're group hugging let's yeah, i actually said that today um i was doing with another astrologer they were like what is your interpretation of pluto and aquarius because a lot of astrologers are saying like oh pluto and aquarius it's going to be bad pluto is going to be in aquarius for 20 years pluto was in capricorn since 2008 right like bad things are going to happen so are good things. There's actually, mm -hmm. and I'm a brief, brief um, soapbox here, but Valens actually says, Valens is one of our earliest sources of astrology, mentions that even in the broadest decades of timing techniques for a person, even if it's a brilliant time for them to be alive, bad things will happen. And then good things will happen because that's like, life doesn't work where it's just good, 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 no. good, 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 bad. Good, good, good. It's, that's not how it is. So we have the opportunity for both the really incredible and exciting expressions of Pluto and Aquarius and some of the um, more challenging and activating expressions of Pluto and Aquarius to happen. I am totally mm -hmm. fine sharing some of my um, my perception on that. If you want the deepest perception, join my, uh, my Patreon because I, I go deep with astrology and interpretation in there and I answer yeah. a lot of questions. 
But here I can give you overviews. And we will, of course, whenever Pluto's doing something really particular, we'll be talking about it on the podcast. Pluto's going to be there, like I said, for 20 years. I have yep. a feeling so will this podcast. <laughs> so no worries. we're not going anywhere <laughs> no <laughs> so what we have is on the 20th this is actually going to start Aquarius season happy solar return Aquarians it's probably going to be a very poignant year for you and I say that because as the sun is coming into Aquarius the sun is going to conjoin with Pluto and then together, less than 30 degree minutes apart, they are going to cross over into Aquarius. This is unique because Pluto, as you might've noticed, moves pretty slow. Been in Capricorn since 2008. This is a whole generation of humanity that we are seeing shifting. Now, I also wanna point out, this is not the last time Pluto will enter into Aquarius because planets retrograde, Pluto actually already came into Aquarius last March, then went back into Capricorn because of retrograde in June. Now is coming back on the 20th of January into Aquarius to stay until September 1st, when retrograde will take him back again, just a little less into Capricorn until November, when Pluto will come into Aquarius to stay. So if you are afraid of Pluto and Aquarius, consider this a sample. Mm -hmm. Which we've already had a little bit anyway. We had last year. And honestly, I don't know why astrologers are saying bad things are going to happen, to be totally honest. Because when I look at this energy, I mean, yes, I do see some not awesome things happening, but they're not awesome in the way where unless we experience these not awesome things, things nothing's going to change. It doesn't feel like chaos for chaos sake. It feels like chaos for benefit of all. It feels like chaos to usher in the next era of humaning. I think that's what it feels like, which is uncomfortable as is everything else about being a physical existence person and shit's going to happen and it's not going to be the, the best necessarily. But the general energy of this Pluto moving into Aquarius feels awesome to me. Like I am really stoked about it because it means change. It means a more humanitarian outlook. It means more connection and community. And it means more like actual tangible magic coming in and inspiration. And again, that, that raise of vibration of the planet is truly happening. And this is another big evidence of that, of like, Hey, mm -hmm. stuff's going on also. And I know this is not just my FYP because I've had people who do not subscribe to this spooky stuff being like, are you saying all this crazy, scary things on TikTok? I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, Oh, people are catching like mimics on film and people are catching like this and blah, blah, blah. And like actually catching that. I'm like, Oh, yeah, that thing. Those are that's what we're talking about. The vibration plan is re things that we're unseen can be seen now, and that is good things and less good things, and all these different things coming up. And I am embracing it. I am stoked. And the fact that the sun and Pluto are moving into Aquarius at the same time, what? Again, that doesn't happen, right? Like, no, I would have to I would have to actually look and study and whatever to see how many times if any in history pluto and the sun have ingressed a sign at the same time on the same day i don't think it's frequent at all because again pluto takes 248 years to go around the entire zodiac the mm -hmm. sun takes a year for, yeah. for reference um for the sun to be at a same at a point and pluto to be at a point and for them to go together it's like when the second hand and the minute hand hit that thing at the same time and you're just like oh like it's something we all watch for or like when the yeah. square on the screensaver hits the very perfect corner <laughs> it's yeah like that that is such a yes. 90s kid reference you just made <laughs> throw that out there all right so but one of the reasons that people are hyped but perhaps in a more tense way is because the last time pluto was in aquarius mm -hmm. 248 years ago we had some revolutions. It was 1778 to 1798. And so this was a revolutionary activating time of people saying, hey, you're being too much. We need more autonomy. We need the people to speak. Do you hear the people saying? Like, really? So we're coming into this moment of people standing up and saying equity is important. Stop stepping on us, you know, stop, stop um, pushing on us too hard. We need to hold boundaries and you need to respect them. Mm -hmm. Now that looks different for everybody. <laughs> Back yeah. 248 years ago, it looked like certain revolutions. This year, our definition of revolution may be different. We have mm -hmm. different technologies now. We have different methods now. We have different ways of connecting and different ways of sending messages. So I'm not saying 
the same kind of themes won't pop up again. I'm just saying, remember what era we live in now and how that might mm -hmm. look today rather than regressing us back to that. Um, and, yeah. and again, it's, it's moments that had to be won or, or fought for, but mm -hmm. the reason they did it wasn't necessarily, and, and I'm not a history buff, right? But the ideals that they were working towards of people being able to have certain freedoms. Aquarius is the liberator, yeah. does like freedom, um, does like to revolutionize and upgrade things and evolve things. And so what people are seeing also is it is also a Saturn sign, right? So Saturn is a malefic, we get that, but Saturn is also the one who draws the boundaries and says, mm -hmm. this is what I need to feel safe. This is what yeah. you need to feel safe. How can we make that work for everybody? Aquarius is so good at, you know, letting individuals be able to thrive individually. Yeah. I, I love that you just that. said, oh, sorry, you broke up a little bit. Say that again. I just said, I hope for that. Oh, I love that you said Saturn is the one who draws the boundaries because one of the huge things that I feel with this Pluto in Aquarius situation is new country boundaries. <laughs> Yeah. Like so much, like I've channeled it for, I mean, this has heard me preach to it. Like, it, and I'm not going to talk, go into my whole rant on here because it is, it can be really polarizing. And I, I thought I'm not about that. Um, not because I think I'm wrong, but because I don't want to piss a bunch of people off unnecessarily or make anyone scared or any of those types of things. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. But, um, Chris has heard me talk about it for the last like, five years of what I think is coming. And this is like, oh my gosh, finally we have those steps kind of happening, which I also think is part of the reason that I'm like, so stoked about it because I just I think so many of us are like just something like after December everyone knows something has to give something has to change everyone feels it everyone can see it everyone has that pressure in like their space of like something needs to change and we are responding to that on a personal level I have said this multiple times on different things but I'm gonna say it again here in the next couple of weeks, especially like most of February, we're going to see people like drastically cut their hair out of nowhere. Surprise, I got a new tattoo. All of a sudden I moved across the country. I rearranged my entire house. It's going to be that because we're like, something needs to change. And so that's the, our initial response is to like alter something about ourselves. Um, and that go, that feeds upwards. So there's change is good. It's scary, yeah. but it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, change is not always graceful. No. And, and one thing I want to acknowledge is that sometimes as change is happening, there are people who don't benefit from it. And there are people who, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the process aren't seen. Yeah. Um, so please don't think that we're saying all oh, change is good all the time. And we're brushing under no. the rug, the, the people who, who, um, you know, are part of that catalyzing experience. Yeah. I respect it. I honor it in the grand Very scheme so. of things. I'm hoping that this leads to better, more um, socially equitable positions for everyone. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't, it's, it's again, it's a 20 year experience of unfolding that we're going to see. Yeah. And occasionally mm -hmm. Pluto is going to have a moment where, um, where they interact with another planet and we have a headline making world changing event. That will happen. Yep. And mm -hmm. I also want to say for people who are like, oh my God, Pluto's in whatever house of yours, am I going to die? Um, it There are ways that you can see if Pluto will actually be talking to you during this period, like if it's mm -hmm. going to affect your life. And no, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to die. <laughs> I was born with Pluto on the ascendant. I'm here. Pluto will be impacting more than half of my chart while Pluto is in Aquarius. In 2043, I will say hello to you again. And I think we're going to be okay. And yeah. if I'm wrong, I won't be here for the repercussions. So it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was a joke. You will <laughs> be <laughs> here, you morbid human. Scorpio moon, what am I going to do? <laughs> I don't know. It's really fun. Chris mentioned <laughs> very morbid jokes kind of all the time. It's pretty fantastic. <laughs> But it's a really cool energy. And honestly, so looking at the energy of Saturday, if you're like, should I honor it? Should I do anything? Just observe. Observe how you're feeling. If you feel drawn to doing magic stuff, it is a once in a lifetime event. Truly. It is truly a once in a lifetime astrological event. Um, it won't happen again. 
for us in this way of Pluto and the sun at the same time on the same day, moving into the same sign, it's not happening. It's not. So if you want to do something, capture the energy of the moment in some way, do something that's important and impactful, do something that matters to you. We'll be at our forgotten storytellers retreat doing some magic there. So that is important and impactful for us. We love that so deeply. Um, But whatever it is, follow your gut. There's not some like specific, like do this thing that's, that's there. I mean, if anything, I think my prompt would be do the thing you want to be able to do more of in the future. You know, for us, we're going to be spending it with forgotten storytellers, having an amazing time with them because we want to do more of that in the future. We want to be spending Mm -hmm. it with people do the thing that you want to be able to do more of and yeah, just sort of I agree with that. That thing. yeah let that start that it plant that seed so it can grow <laughs> over the next 20 years no, yeah no. honestly <laughs> we totally planned the retreat around me so we're like yeah this is what we're doing <laughs> like we're gonna talk about books <laughs> and magic and we're gonna do magic and we're gonna do an activation we're gonna do like so that's what we did. So whatever feels good for you, do that. And I would say, I mean, what is the exact time? It's not super important to be doing it at yeah. the exact time, but it's just okay. Saturday in general. Yeah. No, um, Eastern time, it's going to be 7.56 PM on the 20th. So adapt that to your calendars. If you are on West coast, that is going to be seven minus three, which is 4.56 PM. If you mm-hmm. want to just say round it out to eight o'clock, that would work. And then just, you know, subtract three. So five o'clock on the West coast, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so around 8 PM on the 20th, Pluto will be soundly in, uh, the zero degree and zero minutes of Aquarius with the sun at zero degrees and 27 minutes. I am really excited about that. Um, what we'll be doing at that time on Saturday (laughs) is I'm not going to spoil it for forgot storytellers, but it's really cool. So Aaron, I know you're that's right. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so do it around that time and you'll be fine. Whatever you're doing, or even just taking that energy in Saturday and Sunday and doing something that you want more of. That's fine. You're good there. I think we're really going to feel this one though, which is weird to say about the outerest planet, but I really think we're going to feel this one well, like immediately. Because, so another reason that we'll feel it is because it's talking to an inner planet who is talking to us. So these yeah. transpersonal planets of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, we cannot see them. Sometimes you can see Uranus, I get it, but it's like very infrequent. You have to see them with a telescope. We didn't know they existed before mm-hmm. a telescope. So mm-hmm. they are the elder gods. They are the Titans, so to speak. Like yeah. they're working with nature. They're working with the progression of history. Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily being like humans, look at them all. That's more of a Olympians thing or like say Saturn down to the sun and the moon and Mercury and stuff. But especially- And that's just because Saturn's bitter. (laughs) Saturn is the boundary between the ephemeral and the physical and just sort of that space. And then Jupiter as Zeus is just like, hey guys. (laughs) Yeah, it's very, very on on brand with the mythology. In Mm -hmm. fact- ancient texts they don't refer to them with the roman names they refer to them with the greek names because it was hellenistic um so in like valence he talks about mercury as hermes which is really cool uh saturn is of course chronos but anyway when those planets those outer planets uranus neptune and pluto aspect particularly um the sun mercury venus or even mars those are the personal planets so they're saying hey tell this to the humans and so we have the sun the light mm-hmm. bringer, or the light giver. I don't want to say light bringer because mm-hmm. that gets into Lucifer and that's actually technically Venus as a morning star. But anyway, um, the light giver, the life giver, communicating with Pluto by conjunction. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is something that we might feel an activation of our own inner power yeah, or an intention. Which I love. Sort. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Speaking of that. Experience, what your future sight kind of passion is like what you want to do in the world, how you want to serve humanity that might be lit up a little bit around this time. If you're looking for it. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of that, we had a really awesome question in the Patreon Mm -hmm. about altars. Yeah. Just kind of the gist of them. Like what the heck, how do we work with altars? Where do they go? Just more details on altars um, in general. So we wanted to talk about that a little bit. We talked a little bit about it with our bookshelves going on here. Um, but that is a really awesome way to acknowledge 
energy of different deities, different planets, different spirits <laughs> that you work with. Um, obviously, altars have been really important to many different cultures around the world for a really, really long time. Like the one, the easiest and most accessible um, altar that I can think of is the ofrenda from uh, Mexico for Dia de los Muertos, which is your where you put the pictures of your past loved ones mm -hmm. um, in order to honor that. Like that is the easiest example that people I think think about um when yeah, we say and too alter There's yeah they mm -hmm. um and most most religions have an altar which I think is really interesting they have a place to honor the spirits of whatever it is they work with so whether it is the catholic or christian church they have altar altar boys like <laughs> like that's a thing there's yeah. actually altars yeah um whether it is Buddhism um, I was, I practiced Nichiren Buddhism for a while and, um, they had an altar, um, that you had to kind of earn, um, for that sort of thing. And that's just one type of Buddhism. But if you even go into different, you know, businesses where the people who own the business are Buddhist, like I think of my nail salon, they have a Buddha statue and altar space in the actual business, which is very, very important. Um, to that sort of thing. And then, of course, different pagan religions and ancient religions as well. Um, cedar groves used to be an altar space in um, Celtic or Gaulish traditions. Um, and that's where you would worship. That's where the Druids would do things was the altar of the cedar trees, the groves of these sacred um, trees. Uh, and that is that's how it's carried on. All that's to say, your altar doesn't have rules. So mm -hmm. it's part of that. Altars can be anything from a whole table to a whole room to a windowsill to a bracelet that has all of the images of all the different deities you work with or something on it. All of those things can and are altars. Yeah. And in astrological magic, uh, there are altars so mm -hmm. that you can perform the whatever ritual you're trying to work with for that planet. Um, yeah. That being said, the altar doesn't have to be the same space every time. You no. can have a makeup bag of all the stuff you would need, take it wherever you're going, and then that space where you practice becomes your altar. I have in this room, accidentally, uh, four altars. <laughs> nice. Yep. Get it. Yeah. Yeah, I have I, two. Well, I, I don't know how this happened. Nope, I have three. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wish I could move my computer more, but there are so many cords coming off of it. I have one that mm -hmm. is my desk. So my, my altar on my desk is my candle that is lit when we are recording or doing readings for people or doing lessons with the Forgotten Storytellers. I have my grounding crystal. And from there, it just gets more chaotic. Um, something for incense, something mm -hmm. for blood flow, because if you know me, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Labradorite is here for when I need to channel in something a little bit better. Uh, I have an enamel pin with my pronouns, which helps me show up better. And then I have a bunch of fidget toys because they help me ground. Um, mm -hmm. But that is basically an altar. Like it's that easy. Um, I will say that's an altar to yourself, yeah. which is a really cool thing to remember. Cause that is truly like an altar to yourself, which is also my altar on my desk is my altar to myself. Yeah. Um, multiple different types of crystals. My grounding rock is there um, as well as anyone who knows me. I have a Labradorite tower there for anxiety reduction. Mm -hmm. um, yay for cptsd on that one love anxiety disorders and then i have my copper heart for grounding i have multiple types of rainbow obsidian on my altar i have my grounding orb which everyone has seen before plus i have hermes the hamster and my blanket um, which i consider as part of my altar because i have them near me all the time plus i have an argonite pyramid and i have a tree that's like made of um the purple quartz amethyst Thank you. That one. <laughs> and then I have multiple candles as well. Um, I also want to say the rest of my desk too. I have a couple different little dragon statues that exist on my desk. Um, and I have Orser. Yes, I have my Orser. little fuzzy Orser and um, the talisman you made me for writing. And then a picture of Weston. That's my absolute favorite. So again, absolutely altered to myself as well as multiple pieces of selenite that I cover my computer with. Mm -hmm. when mercury retrograde is happening i have a uh, it to work well hanging on my ring light so that my computer any like bad intentions coming through social media or anything like that are a great idea i should totally put my evil eye where is my evil eye 
Oh, it's right there. I was like, it's nearby. Where <laughs> is it? Facing it, so that works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. no, it totally works. I'm like, I know I did something with it. I have my big one that is right by our front door. The other altars, I actually have four altars within like 10 feet of me now that I think about it. Because I also have one in the living room. And the living room has um, Fortuna, like a, a statue to the goddess Fortuna, and Apollo statue, of which I have two of. I also have one on my main altar, which is right over here. Um, and then my Jasper, my huge hunk of Jasper that I make people touch when they come in the house to ground their energy and clear it out, um, is there, as well as multiple other crystals and the conch we got when we were in Mexico, um, which we used to clear the energy of the house. So we blow through the conch to like clear different parts of the energy of the house. Um that's on like my living room altar, which is, if you notice, though there is deities there, it is these deities of luck, my main patron deity, and then crystals and things that we use to honor the people who come into the house, which is altar and also an altar space. And then my main altar over here, um, which you can't see because there's boobies, <laughs> which show you, but there's boobies. Okay. Um, that is where I actually have my altar to my guides specifically and deities that I'm working with at the time. Um, so that altar actually has on it representations of almost all of my guides, not all of them. It's also where I do ritual work. So um, I have my incense burner over there. That's where I have my manifestation bowl. That's where I have all of my tools to do any type of ritual stuff that I want to do. I have a journal over there. I have pens. I have matches. I have a ton of different herbs and candles and oils and all sorts of different stuff over on that altar, just because those are my magic tools that I use when I'm doing ritual things. Mm-hmm. It used to be more expansive and I have my hymn books over there and a bunch of different stuff. Um, I don't have those as much because I don't necessarily invoke the hymns the way that I did when I was a practicing Hellenic polytheist, but I still have that stuff. So there is a crystal representation of a dragon over there. It's a little dragon thing. It has pretty pink wings. Well, they're like, yeah, they're pink. Um, Boris picked it out. Don't know why, but there's that over there. There's a big statue of Apollo. Lacusta has like a goddess body in obsidian because she wanted it to be black, quote unquote, like her soul. Um, which she's not evil, but she likes to pretend that she is very adamantly. <laughs> I have a little picture um for Hope, who's one of my other main guides, like just a bunch of stuff for guides mm-hmm. over there specifically. So that's another altar. <laughs> Yeah, I have. So my personal altar is my desk. And then over right next to me, I have underneath a map with pins of places I've been. I have my altar to deities and guides that I'm working with Mm -hmm. um, and any tools that I might need in a reading, like in a pinch. So I've got um, right now I've got my bowl of coins for an offering for the house fay. Um, I've got something for Athena because Athena is helping me right now with my studies and hopefully my master's Mm -hmm. degree. And then I have something for Jesus because we work together a lot. And it was funny because last week I was trying to get in, I'm trying to like organize everything for my application for my, my master's in divinity that I'm doing. And they're, they're excited about me because I do magic. (laughs) Um, So it's a really cool program. And Mm -hmm. I was praying and I was like, why are you making this so hard? You presented it to me. Obviously you want me to do this. And now at the last minute here, you're making it hard and giving me a deadline. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you didn't put my thing out. You forgot to unpack it. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I put it out and literally later that day, everything was fine. So it was just sort of like this, please don't forget me as you're learning about Masters in Divinity. Um, so that helped. And again, these are my, my grimoires are all right here. Yeah. Which is kind of an altar in and of itself. And then, so that's my, I also have a mini simmer pot over here for when I want to do like some natural things. My ritual altar is sort of like a table that has just a bunch of craft stuff to it. So I'll do my planetary talismans when I make them there. I'll do um, incense burner, anything I'm doing for other people, I'll do there. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing it on behalf of someone, uh, when I do my lesser banishing rituals, I do them from there. I have my uh, obsidian dagger there and I use that for the the ritual, which I will be teaching. Mm -hmm. places. super excited. And then I actually inherited my grandmother's piano which has become my altar to my ancestors. So Mm -hmm. on my grandmother's piano, I have just like one thing I've kept from my grandparents. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, oh, I just got a ping from my white grandma, who's my grandmother's grandmother, who through channeling taught me how to heal people using brocharai, that I should put something of hers on there. I wear that sometimes. So, okay, but not often anymore. Got it. Um, So yeah, I have like a glass rose that my grandmother promised to me when I was like super little. I was always Mm -hmm. like, can I have that? And she would say, when I die, you can have it. And then when it happened, I was like, can I make sure I get the rose, you guys? (laughs) I didn't want to. It's my mam's piano. My great, uh, great, great grandmother's 
crystal necklace that she made my grandmother give me on my 18th birthday. It was so weird. I was sitting with her at a table and she was like, I need to give you something and took me upstairs. And it's literally a necklace of basically quartz crystal pearls. Mm. Every time it's been passed down, it's broken. So that it's mm. had to be reassembled for the new person. And it did break on me at one point. Um, and now I have it. I wore it at my wedding and, you know, all those really important periods. So it's mostly for um, the maternal lineage of. That's cool. And then I have the the Egyptian hieroglyphs that I channeled that actually form a sentence written on papyrus above that. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, um, they can look however you want them to is the moral of that story. And um, <laughs> they can be as ever, however chaotic you want them to. I will say um, I let my guides pick out what they wanted. And that is uh, something I highly recommend, but do not put in your head. It's going to be something beautiful and awesome. Cause sometimes it's not mm -hmm. insert hamster <laughs> into the narrative if you guys want a story time about hermes the hamster if you're like what is going on if you're a new listener um basically i've been in a big fight with a deity for like a year and a half now um and it is because a different deity punked me so that's <laughs> what's going on yeah, it affects my life more than i'd like to admit i'm not gonna lie it is an active hindrance on my existence a lot of time but anyway i have a story time up on tiktok about that if you want that's what the heck that is about um but yeah so the moral with altars do what you want like it's mm -hmm. just a space for you to honor different spiritual beings that you work with whether that's your guides whether that's deities whether that's ancestors it is truly for you to have a space that you hold and it can be as small as just like a ring dish on your nightstand it doesn't have to be huge Mm -hmm. um i i've done every variation um of altar space that you can do and it is something i actually want to work on releasing a line of and I'm, I'm kind of getting the ball in motion for this so it's not ready yet so no trying out but i'm going to just tell the podcast i really do want to do a line of charm bracelets where you can pick out different charms for your different guides and put them on there so you can have them near you and like have like a, a movable altar that goes with you so i'm working on on getting that happening so we'll see how it goes but yeah, it can be anything. So play with it, have fun with it. Yep. It's important. I have a little mm -hmm. travel bag of things that I take that are like, I have um, a sun talisman that I made back when COVID was a thing and I was first traveling. And I take that with me every time I travel, sun for health mm -hmm. and vitality. <laughs> it is in my bag so that it's always with me. Um, my wallet is technically an altar because in it is a Jupiter Kazemi talisman for success and luck and good fortune. So even just taking charms with you, a keychain will make your keys technically mm -hmm. an altar um yeah you know you're there's any tons of things mm -hmm. all my tattoos my body is an altar i don't know if she appreciates being called that though so i'm not gonna claim that too heavily but that is a thing <laughs> well anyway thank you all so much for listening this is a longer episode but we had a lot to talk about and it's been yeah. really fun um half of it zoom just gave to us and was like would you like to talk about <laughs> That. You've been able to watch um, the day progress here too, because my background, because it's not well lit, has gotten darker. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, yeah. I need to get more That's light fun. in my bookshelf. Yeah, I don't have my candles on right now, but usually I have those lit up as well for the same reason. It's like I need more lighting. And then I also have like a starry night situation light that like hops up for like YouTube videos, et cetera, because I usually record them when it, it's really late at night. Um, I hot that slide sometimes. They're very pretty. They're fun, right? I love them. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for being here. We hope that you just embrace all of this energy coming your way because it's going to be really cool and magical and our intention does matter and affect it. So lean in on that. Um, embrace the energy. Embrace this new, oh my gosh, we have energy again. Energy that I'm coming into, which feels really nice. Um, and we hope that you go Don't make some magic. magic that I one was so not I'm looking away when you put him there <laughs> see you at sacred spaces bye Woohoo!